Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the 2019 Corvette Grand Junior Honors Annual Awards Dinner. We are thrilled to have you here with us tonight. My name is Greg Graber. I am the past president of the Chamber of Commerce Board, and I'm glad to be up here this evening to go through and to spend this wonderful evening with you, going through and celebrating the food we had, the awardees we are getting out, and then a good time of camaraderie afterwards as well with the casino night that always turns out to be entertaining and fun, if nothing else. Um, we have lots of great events and people to celebrate tonight. So to get started, I would like to go through and just introduce our 2020 Chamber Board. As we go through and look at that, our board is going to be represented starting with Ida Depich of Breitbart Chiropractic. If Ida wants to stand up, where'd you go to somewhere? She will come back in. Don't worry, she'll be up here a little bit later. Ida is answering her second year on our board, but was on our board previously as well. So it's great to have that past knowledge to join our board and to share some of the history of our Chamber of Commerce with us. Our 2020 Vice President is Dan Donahue. Dan is entering his fifth year on the Chamber Board and is also the co-owner of the Chocolate Caper. Our 2020 treasurer is Christine Speary. <laughs> Christine works for State Pick Across Plains and is jumping in with both feet as this is her first year on the board. So thank you very much for stepping up as well to be our treasurer. And our 2020 Chamber Secretary is Tom Whalen. This is Tom's third year on the board, and unfortunately he couldn't join us tonight due to some family commitments with children playing sports, which we all have lived through in different ways, shapes, or forms, including getting text updates of the JV hockey game as I'm sitting here with my son. So don't worry, they won 42, so we're good there. <laughs> Rounding out our board, we've got five people working as directors. Our first one, is Craig Close with LSM Contracting. <laughs> Craig is entering his third year on the board. We also have Dean Bott with Kaisi. <laughs> Dean is also entering his third year on the board. Also as a director, we've got Jeannie Carpenter. <laughs> We also are welcoming two new board members, Liz Dice from <laughs> and Cody Hainsey from Edward Jones. <laughs> it is great to have such vibrant people with thoughts and ideas to help lead us into 2020 and beyond. But all of that is impossible with the two people that run our run our chamber organization day to day. And that is our executive director, Judy Knudsen. <laughs> and if you haven't had a chance to meet Amanda yet, Amanda Reesberg is our membership coordinator. Um, with the change of the new year comes some changes with our board members. One person that is leaving us is Elise Smithback of Park Bay. Yep. <laughs> Elise could not join us this evening, but Elise spent four years on the board. President for 2018 and also president for part of 2019. Um, Elise had a huge impact on our board. She created these elite sponsorship opportunities also got the kids run going and definitely had an energy and a vibration that was going with her as she was at the ribbon cutting. So it was always good to have her there helping lead us forward for the, for the past year and a half. 
Also leaving is Bridget Krieger of the State Painted Cross Plains. Bridget, come on up. Bridget's been on the board for six years. Wow. I know, right? It doesn't seem nearly that long. And the only reason she's leaving is because she has to due to her term limits. I uh, believe people definitely wouldn't let her leave. Uh, during the time, Bridget was president, vice president, and also secretary. I think the big thing I'm going to miss, at least with working with Bridget, is that calm demeanor that she brings with her, and also that ability to bring people together. Um, definitely was always good sitting in meetings or being out in events, whether it be Summerfest or the golf outing, and just having that calmness as some people maybe are losing a little bit because it's about ready to start. We don't maybe have everything we absolutely need. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Maybe I don't get to, I'm also getting kicked off due to reach my term limit. Um, wow. I will tell you, six years, I've aged a little. It's not because of the chamber board at all. I blame my kids for most of it, and maybe a little bit on my job. But my kids cost most of that aging. Um, it's been a great six years. It's been a great time to get to know you as business leaders and business members in our community, and really building those connections across all of the different organizations. I was saying earlier how I'm really excited to be here tonight because we have such a great mix of businesses, organizations, and people in this room that's really fun. And that's why I've enjoyed it for the past six years, um, along with bringing back the car show to the Summerfest events, and really just helping out. And if you're looking for a way to get involved, I would absolutely join the Chamber Board because it's a great opportunity to get to know people in our community. So, for me, just thank you for allowing me to do this for the past six years. I appreciate it. I have mentioned our elite sponsors. I want to make sure we take time tonight to thank them. Ticey, TBS, and Oregon Community Bank. Thank you for your sponsorship. Elite sponsorship is something that's newer to our chamber in the past couple of years, and it's really a chance for a business to be highlighted on our website, in our fee alerts, at all of our events. And it comes with some added benefits as well, such as a table at our business expos, a table here at this event, and a foursome of golf at our golf outing. I also know that we have said there is a max of five elite sponsors, so if you're interested, please talk to Judy, because we've got one for two more this year. In addition to our elite sponsors, we also have some great sponsors from our organization, from you guys, helping us make this evening be possible. That is All Color Powder Coating, Beehive Homes of Oregon, LSM Chiropractic, Oregon Community Bank, State Bank of Cross Plains, Stoughton Hospital, Supreme Structures, TDS, Ticey, Trakti, and Verizon Wireless. Thank you to our sponsors. I want to give a special thank you to Firefly, Coffee House of Arson, Jesus, because they provided dessert. And as you'll notice, your dessert there, which I heard was really good, I haven't had it yet. And I'm hoping it doesn't disappear. As, as they have no clue. Um, you'll notice that it says Friday at 9 a.m. Unless I'm mistaken, that is because Uriah makes sure those are ready to go every Friday at 9 in the morning. So if you liked it, Friday mornings at 9 a.m., you can stop by Firefly and pick those up. Thank you, Firefly, for that. And I also want to thank Simply Glamorous Designs and Oregon Floral. They went through and created our centerpieces this evening that are beautiful. And they were here today making sure everything was perfect with those. So thank you to them as well for sponsoring our event this evening. Let's be honest. 
No chamber annual dinner would be complete without a quick chamber 101. So with that, our mission statement is to advance and promote the commercial, industrial, agricultural, educational, and civic interests and it's for the Oregon area and its surrounding communities in order to enhance a higher quality of life. And what I can definitely say, looking back at 2019, is we definitely exceeded promoting, connecting, informing, and advocating. One of the ways that we went through and did that when looking at our year at a glance is the fact that we welcomed 25 new businesses to our members and to our organization, which is awesome. Yeah. And in fact, it's so many, I apologize, that we needed to have two slides of different company names to go through so that they were legible for everybody and not really small up there. So again, for those that are new to us, welcome, and we are thrilled that you are here joining us. We also did our business expos in the fall and in the spring, which is always a great time for us to go out and to meet our businesses, large and small, and see them sharing what they offer to their customers. The golf outing went off without a hitch this year. The weather was great. And I think everybody had fun, whether you came in first or not. And we won't talk about where anybody landed today. <laughs> Summerfest had a little bit of a hitch. There was a little wet a couple of times. But the fireworks of the parade both went off, and it was great to see that. The parade was a little touchy at times, and some of the pursuits were a little damp, but it was a good time had by all. We also do our member meetings 10 months out of the year. And this year we learned about tax changes. We learned about social media. We got to know our members a little bit more as people and as the businesses they worked for. And those are always a great way to get out of the office on a Thursday for lunch and learn a little something. Small Business Saturday continues to be one of our highlights. Um, sending the mailer out with all of our businesses in there. And really, we kind of encompass that entire weekend. So it's not just Small Business Saturday, but we've got our holiday lights that go up, and we have the tree lighting that takes place. This year's tree lighting brought in over 400 people. Um, Oregon Area Fire and EMS hosted a chili dinner on that same night. It was a great time to go and see Santa at the fire department. And we also had some caroling going through as we lit that tree. So again, a fun time to get people out in our community, moving around, visiting your businesses, and visiting our city and our village. We're also here to promote, whether that be through a website, or that be through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram is coming. We are a little behind on it, but that's definitely coming as well, so be ready for that this year, and keep your eyes out for that. We also have our annual community guide that comes out every year in March. And as we go through and look at it, we go for a different look every year. This year we've got the fireworks on our cover. This is our chance to get all of our business members and all of our members out in front of our community in one easy to find spot. And so if you haven't renewed your membership yet, please do so by the end of the month because that's what we base all of our information in this book on. I also believe there's a couple of spots left for advertisements. <coughs> Excuse me. Or as Judy put it, I can always add another page if I've got another person who wants an advertisement. <laughs> so that's an opportunity for February 1st as well. We've also got our chamber bucks, which are a great gift to give out as a way to say thank you. And making sure again that we keep people in Oregon, keeping us a vibrant community. We did economic development with groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings and a bunch of other funny events that brought us out and brought us together to celebrate those things that are changing. And we'll talk a little bit more about those later tonight as well. Whew, okay. That was busy. It was a busy year for sure, but it was a fun year. It was a chance to go through and enjoy our camaraderie. But the real reason we're here tonight is the awards. To go through and thank some of those people in our community and some of those businesses in our community for going above and beyond, and for just being great people that help all of us move forward. This year, I'd like to start by congratulating Mike Grace. 
Mike Grace is the receiver of the President's Award. Mike has been working for the Village and the Village Administrator for 21 years. In those 21 years, he's worked really closely with the Chamber of Commerce and over the past seven or eight, Judy, to make sure that we're able to grow our community, to make sure that we can do things like play a key role in bringing the, the hotel and our other businesses into Oregon. To share a couple of other words about Mike, I'll leave have Matt, the village attorney. Come on, I'll share a couple of ideas. <laughs> This is like the most important speech I've given in a while. <clears throat> All right. So, it's been my privilege to work with Mike Grace for the last 19 years uh, as village attorney. Uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to say a few words tonight. Uh, I think it's entirely fitting uh, for Mike to be recognized by the Oregon Chamber of Commerce. We all know that village government is responsible for uh, providing critical basic services that we all need to live in a healthy community. The village gives us clean water to drink, takes care of our wastewater, picks up our garbage and recyclables, it builds and maintains our roads and sidewalks and our stormwater management infrastructure. It provides for our safety through police, fire and EMS services, it operates a municipal court, to further enrich our lives, the village builds, maintains, and operates a library, a senior center, parks, athletic fields. And the village does all these things through democratic institutions, such as regular elections of village trustees who make and set policy for the village, and through public participation and engagement designed to give the people of the village a voice in important decisions. And as the village's chief administrative officer, Mike plays a central role in managing what is truly a complex enterprise. Beyond providing the basic services that I just described and that we all uh, see, I think that, well, we, we often take for granted, actually. The village, with the help of Mike's leadership, has played a central role in fostering the commercial and economic health of the village. At a macro level, this has involved long-term planning and implementation of strategies that allow the village to grow and create opportunities for new homes and businesses to take root in the village. This is complex and difficult work that plays out over years. For example, uh, one of my very first assignments with the village almost 20 years ago involved the annexation and development of the land we're sitting on tonight. The village negotiated annexation and development agreements, contended with a lawsuit filed by the town, navigated the urban service area amendment process with the Regional Planning Commission and the Department of Natural Resources, financed and constructed the West Side Sanitary Sewer Interceptor that serves this entire area. To name just a few of the challenges involved in creating that particular growth opportunity for the village. And the Bergamont development is but one of many examples of that kind of work. Mike has been masterful in both strategic planning and implementation of these long-term strategies critical to the village's economic well-being. Mike has patience. He has perseverance. He does his homework. He's always well prepared. He's respectful of everyone and works to build consensus. At a micro level, Mike works to help the village facilitate new business and development opportunities in the village. In some cases, the village simply needs to help individuals navigate regulations and, and the process needed to make a project go. In other cases, the village provides tangible and critical support to help a project succeed, usually through tax increment financing. Navigating local regulations and getting a project done can be difficult and even daunting for people who aren't familiar with that kind of process. A good example of Mike's style is 
the monthly meetings that Mike holds to allow people to meet directly with the village's planning, engineering, legal, and other staff and consultants who were going to be involved in their projects. Mike runs those meetings, and at those meetings, we do our best to help people navigate the village's process and work to solve problems where we can. Chamber Director uh, Judy Knutson is a regular presence at those meetings. So she can, I, th I think Judy would agree that Mike's leadership makes the village a supportive and helpful environment to do business. Mike and of course the great staff that Mike has built deserve a lot of credit for the fine way they do their jobs. Mike, congratulations to you on your well-deserved recognition. It's truly an honor to have been selected, but it's also very humbling at the same time. Serving as the village administrator, I recognize that there are so many people, many in this audience, uh, involved in many decisions that we make as a board. So it, for me to be recognized at the Chamber Board is very special. Thank you again. I also want to acknowledge how great it has, it has been to work with the Chamber, especially with Judy. I'm glad that over the years the village and the Chamber have developed a really good relationship based on trust and doing what is best in the interest of the community. I feel the village and the chamber have accomplished some great things together, and that will continue in the future, I hope. I also want to thank the village board members, many of them in the audience tonight, and village staff for their support, and I feel like I'm accepting this award on their behalf because of their tremendous support for me. I really appreciate it, I really do. So once again, thanks for the award, and enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. with how he's staffing his company, building strong partnerships with Mass Area Technical College, Oak Hill Correctional, and some other organizations in order to make sure he's got the high skill, high demand employees he needs that are ready to come to work and to make sure he puts out a product that he is most proud of. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank in the chamber. Um, I will say that I thought my public speaking responsibilities were over a few years back when I left the village board and chamber board. But Judy just got done telling me I had a half hour to fill. So. <laughs> Seriously though, um, I'm up here receiving this award, but this award belongs to so many uh, people other than myself. Um, you only become successful, whether in business or as a person, if you learn from your mentors or the people that you've been associated with throughout the years. Um, I want to go through and just mention a few of those people that were um, significant in my success and the success of all color color coding. Um, 35 years ago, Alvin Kellstrom and his sons, uh, Gary Denny, Doug, and Randy, uh, gave me a job out of college. 
I started working at Wisco Industries. I worked there for 10 years. During that time, I had the opportunity to see how a business was run from the ground up. Um, I was not put in any specific position, but I was given the opportunity to see every part of that business. I was uh, taught how it was important to build relationships, how it was important to be ethical um, with customers, vendors, um, and your employees. I uh, have a lot of respect for that family and what they taught me. Um, after that, there was uh, Marty Burhouse, the name familiar to a, a lot of you. Um, Marty was actually the one that hired me at Wisco, and I worked with him for a few years uh, prior to him and Deb going out and starting their private practice. Uh, after that, I worked for, for them for probably another five years or so doing tax work uh, during the tax season. And it was uh, one, one of the significant things I learned from Marty is uh, the attention to detail. Marty was a perfectionist, as those of you that knew him uh, realized, and I understood from him how important those little details could be on the success or failure of your operation. The other thing that I learned from Marty and Deb is giving back to the community. Although Marty and Deb used to work just crazy hours, seven days a week, they always had time for a church, for the chamber, um, for giving back to their community. And um, again, I tried to live, live with those values. When I started All Color, when I had the, the dream, I guess you will, um, there was a gentleman who was president of Oregon Community Bank and Trust at the time, Jerry Lukey. I went to Jerry and I said, hey, um, I, got, I got this idea. I need a loan to start my business. Jerry gave me a loan with basically the promise to repay and this dream I had. Again, that relationship over the years, um, now with Steve and the others at Oregon Community Bank, has been wonderful and beneficial to the growth of all color. Thank you. Um, got a special friend that I've uh, been involved on the Chamber Board, um, Village Board, who has helped me um, for 30 plus years, I think. Uh, Jeff Grenier, Concepts and Architecture. Uh, he was able to take the old car wash warehouse and turn it into an actual production shop for me 24 years ago down on Main Street. Uh, he's also been involved uh, with designing our current facility, all our remodels, all our additions, uh, as well as, uh, you know, as many of you know, I'm a business partner, partner with Jeff and Becky and I truly value that relationship. Beyond that, um, All Color could not be successful or would not be successful and would, be not, uh, would not be known as one of the premier powder coating facilities in the United States if it wasn't for the employees, both past and present. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have uh, wonderful employees from day one, and I think through those relationships, through learning from them as much as maybe they learned from me, um, we were able to develop a just a wonderful uh, organization that's got a bright future ahead of us. Got a number of employees here today, Ashley, Dan, Kian, Frank. Um, I truly appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, the other, the other um, I guess, uh, significant um, people in my lives are my parents. Um, my mom and dad have done everything to make all colors successful, to make me successful. Uh, my dad can't be here tonight, um, but for the last 24 years, he would do everything. Many of you saw him outside mowing the yard, shoveling the snow. He would do anything I asked. And I know there were a number of times that I, uh, I guess, tested his patience, not only when I graduated from college and decided to go to work at Wisco, and then when I decided to start the business, um, he always 100% supported me, even though I knew he wasn't completely confident in my decisions. <laughs> um, and then finally, my family. 
My daughter, Shania, just graduated from high school. My son, Tyler, who's down in Florida, uh, starting his new career, and my wife, Ruth. I could not have done this without them putting up with just strange hours, going to the shop at 2 o'clock in the morning when something was wrong, answering the phone when the alarm goes off. Um, I truly appreciate it, and it, I am very thankful to have been associated with these people, all of them, and have the relationships that I've had. Thank you. is for Community Impact. And for the Community Impact, we are actually going to award it to three people. So I would like to ask that Frank, Tim, and Dan all make their way up here to the front. We've gone through and kind of thought, who's been having that impact in our community? Who's done so much for us to help us get our word out about Oregon? <laughs> These are the three that popped into our mind right away. Frank goes through and is at every one of our ribbon cuttings, goes through and does Facebook live feeds of that, gets social media put out there for us, and does an amazing job of that, as he's doing it right now. <laughs> oh, we're gonna sell it. Thank you, Frank, for keeping us on social media and keeping us active in that realm. And for all your little tidbits you share as well. If you've ever had a conversation with Frank, you are confident, to, confident I'm confident you'll learn something new that may or may not be useful, but it's definitely something you didn't know. <laughs> Tim as well. We saw Tim's work when the event started tonight. That video of Oregon is something that Tim put together and put a lot of heart and soul into as well, being a lifetime Oregon resident. Tim uses his gifts with drones and video to share a message that really relays what that person, what that organization, or what that company is going through and wanting to present as themselves. Thank you for that. Thank you. The old, oh no. <laughs> Dan is at all of the village board meetings, making sure that those get filmed and shared out for us. He attends Summerfest on an annual basis going through. All three together make sure that the parade is ready to go with the announcer's area, with all the power and video and sound, and then get that shared out as well. So for all three of them, just really thanking you for sharing what's going on in Oregon in a way that I know the chamber couldn't do on their own. Thank you. What did I say, Mark? What did I say? Okay, here we go. For nearly two decades, Dan, Frank, and myself got really good at telling our story. And by our story, I mean all of us, everyone in here, Oregon's story. A few moments stand out. Like the time Dan interviewed Oregon hero, pilot Jeff Skiles who shared his noble story about how he helped emergency land a commercial airliner into the Hudson River, successfully saving the lives of everyone on board. Or the time Frank and I interviewed and told each brave individual story of our local veterans of foreign wars. We even told our neighbor's story, like when Frank in studio interviewed Jim Latimer, the Capital City Band Director. Jim shared his personal experience attending the historic inauguration of President Barack Obama. 
or even closer to home, like when we work together with the Chamber to produce a video welcoming future residents to Oregon. And because this is TV, we of course had some bloopers along the way, many involving Frank. <laughs> Once I was filming Frank interviewing a couple of kids from the skate park, and Frank thought it would be a great idea if he got on the skateboard. <laughs> you know what happens next. Or the time in studio, we filmed Frank learning gift wrapping techniques for the holidays. And in the middle of the program, Frank's suspenders accidentally pop off and he nearly tips over the desk, causing the whole crew off camera and Dan in the mixing room to laugh hysterically. <laughs> but we tried things. Our life's work is predicated on trying new things all the time. We were live streaming Oregon parades before YouTube even existed. It took 10 people in Dan's van full of equipment to set up something that had a 50-50 chance of working. <laughs> but we tried it. Because if it works, we learned something. And if it didn't work, we learned even more. On behalf of the three of us, in addition to thanking the chamber and the community, there are two individuals we would like to thank specifically. We would like to thank the original founder and program director of Oregon Cable Access, Liz Harlow, for always encouraging us to be different. We would also like to thank OCA Media's current executive director, Paul Zwicker, for continuing the legacy. Paul, clap, we can applaud that, right? I now operate my own production company full-time, helping businesses tell their story. So as we go into this new year, I encourage all of you to be different. Don't be afraid of trying new things, because what once took 10 people in Dan's van full of equipment now just takes this. <laughs> Start your YouTube channel. Go live on Facebook. Record a podcast with your coworkers. Share your stories so that we can continue to tell ours. Thank you. Something else to keep in mind that I've learned. If you see any of the three, just realize you're being filmed in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> so. Our next award is our Lifetime Service to the Community Award. And with that, I'd like to ask Jenny Willie to please come up. Janie is Mrs. Oregon. This year alone, she's gone through and made sure all the holiday lights were ready to put up before our events around Small Business Saturday. She's at Summerfest every year from Thursday through Sunday, helping out, doing whatever Judy needs, or telling Judy what Judy needs to do. <laughs> and sometimes, even just going and doing it because she knows it needs to be done. Judy's, or Jamie's done this for years with no desire of recognition. But we wanted to make sure to say thank you for all that you do for our community. And know it is a great community, and we are thrilled that you are here to be part of it with us. So with that, thank you, thank you, thank you. scenes, um, but I do want to thank Judy, it's great working with her, um, and the village, all the members, family, friends, everybody. Uh, for those who knew my husband, uh, Gary, I think we were members back in the early 80s or mid 80s, and we got really involved with uh, Subberfest, especially when Bradley and Stephanie, my son and daughter, um, were of age and we all were a big part of the setting up and just being part of it. Then I got involved with the, the lights after Gary passed with uh, Darlene uh, Grenier and Jim, uh, Jeff and Sue Birdie. Um, us five did a lot of it and, and um, a lot of, now more people have been helping and that's great. 
So I just want to thank the village, the chamber, everybody, friends, friends that came tonight for this meeting or uh, banquet. I want to thank you. Let's go again. <laughs> this evening for new buildings that are in our Oregon community. For the first one, we would like to, or to recognize the Oregon Community Resource Network with the Youth Center building. And for that, I'm going to ask that Randy and Dan please come up. <laughs> While I understand the Oregon Community Resource Network is more than just these two amazing gentlemen, bringing them up today because of their work they've done to better our community as a whole. Whether that is ranging from the youth center or the food pantry, going through and showing all of our residents of our community how important they are to us. And as you go through and look at the youth center for one example, if you haven't had a chance to tour yet, I highly recommend you do. It's really cool to see the design that went into that building to make it functional, to make it useful, and to make it beautiful as well. And if you compare it to what they had, just a year and a half, two years ago, wow, is a night and day difference. And for a company such as Supreme Structures to be involved with our community, to go through and do the youth center, the food pantry, the waterfall land that's being worked on right now, and a list that goes on and on, and I believe Dan shared with me about a month ago, includes getting water into the um, concession stands at the football field. There's just all these different ways that Dan has had his hand in improving the Oregon community. Thank you. Also, want to make sure and thank Randy. Randy is out there making our community better, making sure that we've got the fundraising we need to go through and add things that our community has as a need, and that Randy sees as something he can change and impact. And I'm quite confident in probably working on one, two, or five other projects right now, and we're going to appreciate those just as much. So both of you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So this is my second um, project working with, with Dan Burtler. And um, if you know Dan, Dan's got a lot of energy. Um, <laughs> But I, I wanted to share a story that both Dan and I have a vivid memory uh, related to the youth center, and that's when we had the ribbon cutting. Um, <clears throat> the building was done, we were ready, ready to cut the ribbon. The kids had not seen the building as of yet. So we were all inside waiting for the kids to arrive. And <clears throat> I remember they filed in one by one, and you would have thought it was Christmas morning. The big eyes, big bug eyes, and the kids were so excited to see the basketball court and the, the huge building compared to what they had, the little Quonset hut that they had, and all the new furniture. So um, th that, I think, you know, we had some hiccups on the way with soil, believe it or not, and things, but we got through it. And uh, Dan and I, are, we are working on a couple other things, so I'll let, I'll let Dan. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not much of a public speaker, but uh, th this award is uh, a little selfish for Randy and I sit up here. Uh, first and foremost, this building never would have got constructed without the village. Y you guys were the first and foremost and said, what does the community need? What do we do? And what are the next steps? So thank you to the village. Second is the community. Without the funds and the community and the backing of the community, this building would never get constructed. And it's all about what do you give back? What do we do for the future? What do you do for the future for our family? So as we move forward, OCRN is gonna recognize the construction of the youth center and the construction of the food pantry. And we're gonna have an event in the near future 
We're also gonna bring the library, JC Park and Bow. It will be a community event sponsored by OCRN. And this is a good thing. This is giving back to the community and a thank you. So on tonight, I wanna to say thank you to everyone. And I'm just one person of many and celebration starts. Thank you. Our second new construction goes to Beehive Homes of Oregon. And for that, I would like to ask Andy, Gina, and Josh to please come on up. <laughs> Beehive Homes of Oregon joined the Oregon community in 2017 with the opening of their first building. And now, a short two and a half years later, they have proven to be a mainstay of our community. With them and their residents being welcoming and opening, when you walk into the beer, their building, it just feels like you're in our place, which is amazing. And the friendliness that they have of their employees and everybody there. There are multiple activities they have going on for every week, whether it be exercise or it be a craft or it be younger students coming and reading to their residents. There's always some kind of energy in their building because of all the movement. And they've also got their bus trips that they go on on a regular basis to go through and just see Oregon and a much larger area. And I believe this year we're part of the homecoming parade and the Summerfest parade, if I'm not mistaken, with their bus. So with that, we want to thank you and congratulate you on the opening of the second building. And just a real quick note, when you open the third, we'd love to have just some beautiful weather, not freezing cold and not extremely hot. <laughs> But congratulations, thank you. is such a big part of our residents' lives. And we quickly learned that, um, how important it is to them, for them to be able to remain in their community. And um, they might not know a lot at times, but they certainly know that they're in the town of Oregon. <laughs> and they're very proud of it. So I just wanna thank a few people. Um, I did make a little list just so I didn't get nervous and forget. But um, Judy, at the chamber and everybody that's involved with the chamber in making sure that our community stays glued with all or that all the business owners are able to get together and um, we're able to come together on a regular basis um, the community itself um, everybody in this community has been um, cheerleading for us from day one and uh, we thank you for that because um, it can be tough but everybody's support seems to be there for us um, the Senior Center, anybody that's involved with the Senior Center, they're uh, huge advocates for our home and they do amazing things um, with the program down there. I've run into other Senior Centers across the Madison area and they always um, um, rant and rave about how well the Oregon Senior Center is being run. So great job with them. Greg, thank you for um, leading the Youth Apprenticeship Program. We have a handful of young CNA students that work with us and they're, they're a huge part of filling the gaps in our schedule. And Greg is always on top of um, making sure that all of their requirements and responsibilities are met through, the, through the, that program. Um, Kathleen Zelinski, she's not here. She's our uh, wellness coordinator and she's phenomenal. She's um, a well-known name in this community but uh, she's, you know, if you, if you follow our Facebook page, which I encourage everybody to do, um, you'll see all of the postings of the stuff that she's doing on a daily basis. And also coordinating a lot of volunteers and music and um, some, some paid entertainment, but tons of, you know, the holiday season, our home was filled with, um, you know, Christmas carolers and Boy Scout groups, Girl Scout groups. Um, the RCI kids coming in, so we're always trying to do something there. Um, but besides that, um, 
thanks to my business partners and everybody else that um, supports what we're doing. And thank you very much. We're excited about our new building and our growth. And um, we welcome anybody to come and, and check us out. And, and uh, that's it. <laughs>
next building renovation award goes to recreational concepts. And I would ask that Jeff, please come up. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff could not be here tonight. I apologize on that one. <laughs> recreational concepts is a long-term Oregon business who just had the opportunity this year to go through and move out from Main Street to Highway 138. And in making that move, they were able to go through and consolidate from three different locations for a showroom, an office space, and a warehouse space into one. And it's great to go through and have them see that growth and need that growth that they've been able to go through over the past couple of years. Recreational Concepts, if you're not aware, goes through and designs and creates the ultimate backyard experience. In addition, in addition to them doing that, you've probably seen them around with their fire truck and parades and other community events as well. So we we'll take this opportunity to thank Recreational Concepts on being a member and on their expansion. Our third building renovation award goes to the Wishing Tree. And I'd like to ask that Joe and Kelly please come up. That's OK. Joe and Kelly, between the two of them, are longtime Oregon residents with a combined total of over 25 years of experience leading yoga and other fitness classes in our area. And through the Wishing Tree, they are committed to keeping yoga classes available within the Oregon community. They were thrilled when the storefront at 121 Main Street became available, and they worked with the owner of the building and with Lee Olson of Oregon Building and Remodeling to go through and transform their space into an inviting space. Congratulations. Concepts for downsizing or upsizing into their one building, otherwise we wouldn't be at 121 North Main. Um, yeah, it's been it was a wild ride, and we're really happy to be there and be part of the community. <coughs> Our tagline is rooted in community, so we really have a strong feeling that we want, wanted to keep um, yoga in Oregon and be a place that people could come and practice and hang out and build community and friendships. So if you haven't stopped by, come on by. Um, and the I2 guys were like rah 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 and we're kind of a little more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you like to all on one, two, three, say oh. <laughs> Thank you, that's a And with that being the last award for 2019 awardees, it is my honor now to hand it over to the 2020 Chamber President, Ida Dempich, to finish up a couple of last messages before we continue on. Um, first of all, um, thank you for the chamber and the chamber board for electing me as president. I'm really excited to be here um, to lead the board and, and be a good part of your community here in my community. Um, it's just, it's fun to be a part of the community. So, very excited to get to know many of you that I don't know and get to know those that I do know a little bit better. Um, also, I'd like to thank my husband for his support. Joe, I really appreciate all that you support me in. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to leave you with this. Find your blessings every day, embrace your challenges, and find that balance.